Hello, this is a walkthrough for the Spring 2019 final for ME266. This is the first uh, recording I'm making for differential equations. Uh, it's actually the second take for that recording. I got so upset with how bad my explanations were that I uh, quit about halfway through. So here we go again. I figured out a stupid mistake I was making, and uh, we're back at it. So let's determine the interval where the solution is guaranteed to exist for the following initial value problem given here. So we know that the existence of uniqueness theorem says that if we have an equation in the form of y prime plus p of x y equals q of x, uh, we were guaranteed to have a value uh, that our solution, our solution is guaranteed to have a value uh, for, for any rectangle where p of x and q of x are both defined. So let's put our equation into this form and see what we can do. So that would be y prime equals, nope, sorry, y prime plus 1 over t plus 2 y is equal to 1 over t minus 1 t plus 2. There we go. And we see that both of these, or collectively, they are minus 1, there we go. They are undefined when t is equal to either negative 2 or 1. And since we know that uh, our solution curve here passes through the point uh, y of 0, so the point x equals 0, sorry, well, in this case it's t, t equals 0, uh, the biggest rectangle we can draw around that point on t without hitting um, any of these bad values are these two bad values themselves, because if we have negative 2, 1, I don't need to tell you that 0 uh, falls in between both of those. So uh, there is our answer. One is B. Two, the general solution to this guy is what? Let's uh, do the same thing we did, divide out an x squared so our y prime is all by itself. So y prime plus 2 over xy is equal to e to the 3x over x squared. So we're going to uh, do uh, the integrating factor technique for this. We're going to raise e to the uh, integral dx of, of this guy right here. So e to the integral 2 over x dx is equal to e uh, to the 2 ln x, which is the same thing as x uh, raised to the second power. And we know that y of x is equal to 1 over what we found from here. So 1 over x squared times the integral of this guy. Uh, of rho of x, which is x squared, multiplied by q of x, the guy that we have sitting on the right side, and that will be uh, e to the 3x, e to the 3x over x squared. And these two are going to cancel out, slap a dx on the end there, and we are ready to solve. This is going to give us y of x is equal to 1 over 1 over x squared times 1 third e to the 3, e to the 3x plus c. And this is the same thing as y of x is equal to 1 over 3x squared, e to the 3x plus c over x squared, which is the same thing as option c. So 2 is c. Question 3. I'm very, very embarrassed to say that I, I could not, I couldn't figure out for the life of me how to do this one. I tried using our favorite substitution, uh, v is equal to y over x, and got a really heinous integral and knew better than uh, to try to solve it. Um, and I also tried some very bad methods for, um, you know, you know, solving this by separation of variables. But I, I forgot what I had done every single other time I've gone through this exam, which is what we're going to do now. So uh, we want to uh, see if we can make this, or see if this is a separable differential equation, uh, and it is, because all we have to do is divide out y and multiply by dx, and we'll have things in the form 1 over y dy is equal to 4x over 2 plus x squared dx. Integrate both sides, we'll get ln y is equal to well, okay, let's see what we can do here. Let's uh, take out a 2, and then we can do uh, perfect u substitution 
this will become 1 over u du. So we'll have, in the end, 2 ln 2 plus x squared plus c. OK, so this will become, uh, if we raise each side, uh, if we do e to each each side, that, 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 that didn't make sense, but you, you, you know what I mean. To get rid of this ln, exponentiate both, we'll get y equals e to the 2 ln 2 plus x squared. And then that plus c will just come out as a constant there. OK, uh, finally, this simplified some more is y equals c times 2 plus x squared raised to the second power. We know that y at 0 is equal to 4, so we can plug that in. 4 is equal to c times 2 squared. That means c is equal to 1. And we can solve for uh, y equals root 3. So y is equal to 2 plus root 3 squared, so 3 squared. And that's 25. 3 is b. Question 4, the general solution to, this, to the following differential equation is what? So it's looking pretty exact to me. This is the general form of uh, what, what we'll see for exact equations. And looking at our answer choices, you only really get big polynomials like that uh, with c's sitting by themselves uh, if, if our equation is exact. But we do have to prove that our equation is exact. We'll call this function over here m. We'll call this function n. But uh, we're going to have to make this m plus n, so that's, that's going to mean uh, negating both of the terms inside. Uh, we know that this is, an only, this is only an exact equation if my is equal to nx. Let's see if this is true. my over here, the partial derivative of m with respect to y is 1, and that's equal to nx. nx is just the partial derivative of n with respect to x. That's also 1, so our equation is exact. So what, what we're going to do now is integrate m dx and integrate n dy and uh, kind of smush everything back together into one big function. So nx, sorry, not nx, I meant uh, M mx, the integral of m with respect to x is going to give us x cubed plus xy minus 4x. And then on the other side, the integral of n with respect to y will give us minus y squared plus plus xy. So we see that because both m and n both had to come from the same overall function, we're only going to count this xy once. And so finally, uh, our answer becomes x cubed plus xy minus 4x, taking uh, these three terms from over here. And then the only one we're going to count from our right side is minus y squared is equal to c. And we see that that corresponds, nope, with, with uh, not answer choice D, with answer choice E. 4 is E. 6. Given that y1, is equal to, uh, y1 equal to t is a solution of the following equation, which of the following is also a solution? So first off, we're going to put this in a form where y double prime is on its own. So y double prime minus 1 over t squared y prime plus 1 over t cubed y is equal to 0. And we also know uh, that there's a nice equation where you can do this reduction of order uh, pretty quickly. And that, let's see if I can remember it, is y2 of x is equal to y1 of x uh, with uh, multiplied by a big integral. And that integral has e to the negative integral of p of x dx all over y1 of x squared dx. OK, so we got some nested integrals going on. This is going to be, this is going to be a fun time. Uh, we know that p of x is the term on y prime of x, so we can substitute that in. And since we have two negatives, I'm just getting rid of both of them. 1 over uh, t squared dt. This one will also be a dt. And then our y1 is just the first solution that we know. So this is t, and down here will be t squared. OK, 
uh, we're ready to ready to get things going. I'm gonna gonna put that up there. So we have a little bit more a little bit more room to work with. So y2 of x is going to be equal to uh, e to the negative one over t dt uh, integral. Uh, sorry, t integral e to the negative one over t over t squared dt. We can do a u substitution with negative one over t, and this will become, so u equals negative one over t, du equals one over t squared dt. And so dividing uh, our, uh, dividing that term out, we will get y2 of x is equal to t multiplied by the integral of e to the u du. This will just be uh, e to the u plus c, where u is negative 1 over t. And uh, we're, still, we're still distributing, so this will be tc. And we have actually solved our question here, because uh, c can be any value, but if c is equal to 0, we see that y2 of x, well, I've been calling it x this whole time, uh, it's actually t, y of t, is uh, t e to the negative 1 over t, which is exactly answer choice e. So 6, 6 is confirmed as e. Okay, let y of t denote the unique solutions to the initial value problem, y triple prime plus 3y double prime plus 2y prime is equal to 0, and we're given some initial values. So let's pull out our characteristic equation. This will be r cubed plus 3r squared plus 2r is equal to 0. Let's factor out an r. r squared plus 3r plus 2 is equal to 0. And then we can factor this further. r plus 2, r plus 1 equals 0. So r, uh, our roots are 0, negative 1, and negative 2. So we can set up our solution here y of x is equal to c1 e to the 0, oh, I switched to t, 0x plus c2 e to the negative x plus c3 e to the negative 2x. Uh, right here, this guy's just going to simplify down to 1, and we are, we are left we're left with this. So what we're going to have to do is figure out what c1, c2, and c3 are equal to. And we're in order to do that, we're going to have to uh, take a bunch of take a bunch of derivatives here. So y prime of x is equal to zero c1. And and I just as I wrote a plus, I realized it was minus minus c2 e to the negative x minus 2 c3 e to the negative 2x. And y double prime, is, it's looking more like a t, y double prime of x is equal to uh, still 0 c1 plus c2 e to the negative x plus 4 c3 e to the negative 2x. OK, so since our initial conditions are all given for uh, y, or sorry, x is equal to 0, all of our terms are going to uh, cancel out, and we'll see by all of our terms, I mean all of our e to the x's are going to just be 1. And so we can set this up as 2 equals c1 plus c2 plus c3. Uh, also, we have negative 1 equals uh, 0 c1 minus c2 minus 2 c3. And finally, 1 is equal to uh, 0 c1 plus c2 plus 4 c3. Uh, we're actually going to make this into a matrix, bring a little bit of uh, linear algebra back in here, turn this into an augmented matrix where our variables are c1, c2, c3. We'll have 1, 1, 1, 2 uh, is equal to, and not is equal to, I'm just setting up other rows, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 4, 1. And we can uh, row reduce this, and we should we should get our solutions, at least our values for c1, c2, c3, and we'll be much closer uh, to getting an answer. So I'm going to row reduce uh, this guy 
right over right over here. Let's add row two to row one. You'll get zero, negative one, one. Let's uh, add row three to row two. We will get zero, two, zero. Uh, we can simplify that down to one. And using row two, we can get rid of row one and row three. And it looks like there is our, there is our solution here. We see that C1 is equal to one. So we can go up here and uh, replace things. C1 is equal to one. C2 is equal to zero. And C3, oh, sorry. Uh, my, my, my own ordering uh, got in the way. Uh, this is C3 here. This is C3. C3 is equal to zero. And C2 is equal to one. So we get our solution y of x equals one plus e to the negative x. And when we plug in y equals one, like they're asking us for up here, we get answer choice C. So eight is C. And uh, that's actually it. There aren't any more questions that are applicable uh, for midterm one from this exam. Hopefully that was helpful.